Okay, guys, we're going to deploy a medical treatment prediction model using AWS SageMaker XG Boost. Okay, download both of these from the Kago website. We're going to use them both. We're going to train the model on the train MS CSV. When you do, after you do your execution roll and create your bucket, you're going to see 28 columns. Okay, we're going to need to drop all of these, all of these. We're going to need to drop this and this as well. DF info, now there's 14 columns. Do the same for your um, other one. All the difference is there's not a, whatchamacallit, um, a treatment one for the test one. The test MS CSV. So, got to make sure that both of these columns have the same shape, same amount of columns. DF shape, DF2, remember? Now, before we continue, we need to do fill in A and label encoder for both of these. And then th this is what they should look like. Okay. Now, you're going to split that first data frame that we took care of into training and test sets. Okay, and then PD Concat train data as well as for test data. Bucket name, the usual. And then remember, your train and test are going to go right here. We're going to use this train for the default model monitor later. XGBoost, latest. Containers, remember, binary logistic. Last time we did um, softmax multi-class because it was different. Num round, uh, you might want to lower that a bit. Okay. Okay. And then fit your train and validation. And then that's how it did. It had like 10% error. For Zen. Okay, data capture configuration. Sampling percentage, enable capture true. Okay. And then this is how we're going to predict the first data frame. Remember, predictions equals test data to NumPy. Do all these the same, except for down here. Because, and then we're going to do predictions to predict DF2. I mean, you leave predictions up here. And then, as you can see, different predictions. Now we're going to go down to PD cross tab for the test data. You're going to take treatments and then you're going to round the predictions, actuals and predicted, and you're going to get this right here. Now we're going to invoke an endpoint for a single prediction. The endpoint name is your endpoint name. Remember? The endpoint you just created when you deployed. Print the results. Now use train uh, CSV, which you created earlier, for your baseline data set. We're going to do a processing job. This takes a while. Okay, guys, now uh, we're going to get some basic baseline constraints. And then we're going to name our monitoring schedule. And then we're going to endpoint name equals predictor endpoint. Create the monitoring schedule. And then hourly.
hourly. And then uh, we're going to get our constraints. Earlier it was scheduled. And then I got to show you guys one more thing. Okay. Remember how here you named your monitoring schedule? Well, it completed with a violation. Here's the one violation it had. It was actually... It, the current data set had extra columns. That was it. So it'll alert you to any violations or model drift. Don't worry about that. Now, if you guys want higher accuracy for this one, what I suggest is drop remote work. I should have dropped that one too. Drop remote work in tech company, maybe. Okay. Anyways, once again, you get the uh, data set from here. Okay, that's all. And guys, remember, this is not full-scale production because you're not registering the model artifacts or building a pipeline or using uh, Amazon Clarify throughout. Yeah, there's a default model monitor. Yeah, you deployed a model. Yeah, you did predictions and got... But uh, full-scale production involves SageMaker pipelines, which is the last step in registering the pipeline artifacts and model artifacts. When I hit enough subscribers, I'll do that for you guys. Thank you, guys. Bye.